All right, good evening. Welcome to the Capital Planning and Improvement Capital Improvement and Planning Committee meeting. It's Monday, October 21st, 2024, and it is 7.04 p.m. Um, I do expect Steve to join us tonight, but unfortunately, Jeff is unable to join us. So we are able to proceed, though, with three as a quorum. So we will go to our first order of business, which is approval of meeting minutes for June 24, 2024, and July 25th, 2024. So on July 25th, does anyone actually have those minutes or responsibility for those? All right, I will work with Jeff to make sure that those get back to us, at least in draft form, so we can post those and then we'll approve them at the next meeting. The June 24, 2024 meeting minutes are um, in the meeting packet. At, um, I know Tony drafted them. So Joe, did you have any questions on those? Nope. Um, Tony, the only thing I'm going to propose we add is the time we got called to order and end. So I can just go back and look at the transcript of when we called ourselves to order and how long the meeting was, and then just copying um, the roll call to each um, each of the thing. You wrote in unanimous, but we should write it because we did do it for your roll call, even though it was unanimous for each of the votes. So um, I'll just copy those two and send them in if you're you're amenable to that change. That's fine with me. It seems right. to me that unanimous covers it, but if you want to add yeah. the names, then you go ahead. Yeah. All right. Steve's here. So we get him over. Jason, I'll take the I'll take the minutes for this one. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right. Steve, welcome. We're just about to make a motion on the meeting minute. So I will move that we approve the June 24, 2024 meeting minutes with the edits discussed this evening. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All right, roll call vote, Tony? Aye. Joe? Aye. Steve? Aye. And I am I as well. So that's a 4-0 vote. Uh, chair member update, Neary Building Committee status um, update. Uh, so there's been a lot that has gone on since we last met. I will keep my comments brief tonight, but just ask that the, um, depending on where you're at on this project, how much information you have or don't have, that you just pay attention to a lot of the open forums that are gonna be coming up. And if there are certain questions um, that you'd like to see answered, certainly um, make sure you're participating there. Um, so you'll continue, I'll make sure you're all um, made aware of those. Um, some will be Zoom, some will be in person. Um, there'll also be office hours um, during uh, daytime hours as well. And then to the extent that the um, committee is asked to make a presentation to select board and or advisory at any point in time, we'll also obviously make that a joint posting for capital to the extent that uh, people want to be uh, involved in that. So a lot to come. There has been a tentative date set for a special town meeting. I use the word tentative because it's all contingent on the, the design continuing to proceed as is in the MSBA um, meet, continuing to meet their meeting schedule. Um, Mark, do you have that handy? Or do you want me to look it up while we talk? What, the uh, date? The special in May. Uh, Saturday 10th, right? At 9 a.m.? Saturday the 10th, 9 a.m. at Algonquin. Okay. So I'll be independent from the annual town meeting. Questions? Okay. Um, we are now going to start our um, series of review with various department heads tonight. We have two, we have the facilities director and the fire chief tonight. So we'll start with facilities. Um, we will walk through the, the timeline for how we're gonna proceed and where we're at bigger picture once we get through these two departments. So I figured we'd let the department heads walk us through um, their submissions, things to be aware of on the horizon and candidly, and probably most importantly for at least this evening, where they are focused for the 2025 annual town meeting, which would be a FY26 budgetary expense unless debt excluded. The one thing I will say before I, I hand it over to John is I submitted his um, recommendations as initially submitted by the deadline. 
Um, my understanding is he does have a update on one of them um, related to the townhouse HVAC um, in terms of the timing of that, but I figured I would submit it as submitted and let him verbally walk through where he's at on that just to make sure the committee's okay with that. And then we will update any submissions from there. But I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of which data we're working with so that there's no confusion as John uh, speaks. So John, maybe I'll let you start by just uh, previewing um, in addition to obviously the memo and your other submissions that you sent in, anything you want us to be aware of before we kind of fire away at you with um, any questions. Not a problem. Uh, basically, it's a pretty straightforward one this year. There's only really two capital items for FY26, uh, one being the overhead doors down at the DPW. As you may or may not be aware, a few years back, uh, we actually took four of the overhead doors in the back and made two giant doors. With the advancement of wing plows and the size going on, we did need to open up the side of the building to make those happen. And um, we have one door on the opposite side of the building that unfortunately a backhoe went through a few years back. So that one's been replaced. Um, those doors are put in in the addition back in the early 90s, the rest of them. And it's time to upgrade those at this point for the for the building. You know, we're doing some repairs and it's about time to replace those doors. We've held off quite a bit. And as repairs start to increase a little bit more, it, it really makes sense at this point to do that. Um, I did check with the company that I got a rough estimate on a few years back. They feel that this number is still good and we should be able to do it for this price, including openers and such. Um, so that's pretty much a straightforward one. And the other item you will note that I have is for some money for the flag school. Now, this is one that's a little bit tricky uh, because no one really knows what flag school is going to become, you know, moving forward. I'm asking for enough money that if we do use it, you know, there's been talk youth and family going there, there's been talk of other departments going there, there's been talk of possibly meeting space. I'm trying to look at it from worst case scenario. Um, I'm looking at it so with enough money that we can do some work on the inside, we could frame out office space we had to change out the floors, do some work down in the basement, condition spaces for some storage. Um, so I'm asking for this money. Now, what I would recommend is if we're going to be serious about keeping this building, which I have every intention that we're going to be, I've heard nothing otherwise, I would say when it comes to the exterior stuff, we should probably look at CPC stuff moving forward. Let's look at funding from them to take care of the exterior because it's not a big project from a CPC perspective outside. And um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the uh, Spencer Preservation Group study that was done in the building a few years back, but it does basically specify what the building should look like on the exterior, which is greatly different than it looks now. It was basically a tan building with green trim, I believe. Um, so basically that building should be brought, be brought back to historic look. And if we did do something like that next year for CPC, we may actually be able to get it done before the 300th anniversary, which would be really nice where we already have the townhouse done up there too. But again, this money this year is mainly for interior stuff to get people in the building if we're going to use this building, which I have no intention of, no understanding rather, that they're not going to be using this building. As for the HVAC system, at the town hall, we had a good working number, so we thought the first of two portions of this project came back at the working number, which I do not believe is a realistic number. I've talked to a few other people. I'm going to work on getting some updated quotes for next year um, because my goal, again, is to present you with a number of what it would cost us if we were funding it totally. But in a project like this, I would rather pay part of it through you know, regular general funds and, and capital funds, and the rest of it be funded through green communities or other grant programs. My goal is to drive it down as low as possible, but I could not in good conscience bring you in a number that was double what I really feel it should be. So I, I pushed it out of here. I just can't do that. Okay. Um, and then John, can you just touch, and then we'll, we'll come back to your questions is, I know it's usually a separate article um, the capital maintenance fund. It looks like you're keeping that flat for the year. Any, I, I know the question comes up every year. Is that the right number? Um, just, I guess, walk through the rationale why you still have it at a hundred. Ideally we go up another 25,000. I'm going to squeak it through one more year at a hundred, I think, but I am noticing increases in prices as everyone is in their personal lives. It's definitely happening at our end too. 
We are seeing it happen. Um, we're very good about managing what we spend. Um, but as we move forward, we are going to need to address that, Jason. As you and I have discussed in the past, this number is we've held tight since this has been implemented, I believe. And God, that's got to be almost 20 years ago, I think, they implemented the capital maintenance article. And I think it was 100000 then. So we've done really well, but there, there comes a point where we have to make some adjustments. I have a few thoughts on that, but I'll come back to it. I just want to make sure you get so that that's the that's your total amount that you're presenting, but you're obviously recommending that we do not advance the townhouse HVAC um this year as per year, which is obviously yeah. contrary to your initial submission, but you've outlined why you believe that's the case. I, I think it's prudent at this point. Okay. Uh questions or comments from the committee. Go ahead, Joe. Um, John, thank you. Thank you for making me look up vermiculite. No idea about that one. Wondering why it was 50 grand for removal. Got it. Um, thought I'd put that out there. Um, are we really looking at, um, is 250,000 going to cover all the doors? Will that yes. be a fun project? Meaning we don't have to touch it again. So all the doors from the nineties will be replaced. And then we're looking at 30 years. Uh, yeah, realistically, you should you should be able to get 30 years out of overhead doors of proper maintenance. Are darn yeah. close to it. Um, do we have to paint the uh, flag building tan and green? I know that's a little peevish on my part, but I really would sharp? highly recommend you paint the tan and green. I think it would actually be quite sharp, Joe. I really do. <laughs> is that is that because that's the way we're going to get CPC historic funds out? Or is no, that I I honestly probably... do believe it would look nice. Seriously, <laughs> I think it would look very nice. Well, that but put it this way, I'll I won't die on that hill. <laughs> um, so so the the townhouse Ford and fifty, uh, where are we going to go with this in the future? So you you're thinking Grant, but you're not sure. Is that what you just said? No, I'm going to work on getting some updated quotes over the next year. If I can get some numbers that are more aligned where I feel this should be, we would be able to apply for um, a lot of rebates right now. And they're going to continue going at this point, it looks like for heat pumps, which are the split systems. And we can also use green community funds. So that would really hammer down what this number is. As you know, I always have to put forward is if we're going to pay for the entire thing ourselves. So this would be sort of like a bunch of exterior units. Uh, no, you probably have, I'm going to guess you'd need three on the exterior. Um, and then we'd have the heads throughout the building. Like you see in a household. So it would be it'd be a modification of the current system. Mm, not really. You have big, big air handlers in the basement right now. And we have five units outside, I believe it is, if I recall off the top of my head. Um, and so basically the air handlers would be able to come out. They're quite old. And my predecessor had those rebuilt in his tenure. So it's been, you know, we're approaching 20 years since those have been rebuilt again. Uh, we do maintain them well, but, you know, things start breaking here and there. Um, can I get so, some more time? Yeah. Sure. Everything's um, about 20, everything's 20 to 30 years on replacement. That's pretty, not, pretty much. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not going to, um, try and dispute that sort of thing. Um, what's with the contingency for future capital facilities projects? Uh, we pop that in, in case something pops up over the next year. We say, oh God, you know what? That's going, we should really replace that for the yeah. unforeseen basically. Yeah. I'm just, I, you know, I'm watching it go. A year out, we're looking at 150, and then you know, sort of three, four years out, we're looking at 325 all of a sudden. And I'm wondering, you know, if this is part of the, you know, enlargement of and sort of an enlargement of the capital maintenance fund per se by the fact that we're just adding a separate one onto the top. Uh, no, what actually, Joe, like when you look at the 150, if no new project comes up, that number just comes off. Yeah, but then those Just people before lotting that year after year, then we're then essentially it's almost like a rollover, isn't that? Uh, you're preparing for a pos an inevitable, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, we always do have stuff pop up. It's just a matter of, you know, whether whether this is something that we're going to end up treating sort of like a revolving fund, which is why I sort of am picking on it a little bit. Um, it's not that I don't disagree that. I, I think some other things have been underfunded in the past. It, I mean, is this a fact where we're sort of underfunding random capital events that are going to happen in facilities, and this is our way of coping with it moving forward? I honestly don't think so, because the methodology with the facilities department 
as our budgets have always been quite well, we've worked within the parameters of what we've had. We've only once had extra extra money, and that was the failure of a septic system up at the town hall. So generally, the way it's been operating, it it does work well. So so the plan is that you'll take these off every single year mm -hmm. ahead of where we are, and uh, that way, let's say next year I have to add a project that's seventy five thousand. So okay. we would add that 75, but that other 75 of the 150 contingency goes away. I don't ask for it. It's just be prepared in case something pops up. We'd like you guys to buffer yourselves just in case. So I don't blindside you with something huge. So this is just a financial place marker, not an actual fund that we'd be. There you go. You got it. You got it. All right. Thank you. I'll shut up now. Yeah, we are not. <laughs> none, none of that. That line would not come forward to town meeting. Right. If it was going to come forward to town meeting, it would have a specific purpose. Um, but what John is saying is he's not perfect at budgeting. Is that a better, better way of putting it, John? <laughs> Haven't got my amazing Kreskin hat yeah. on. <laughs> All right. um, and obviously, given with different buildings, different age, we don't know what may happen. Um, okay, Steve? Thanks, John, for joining us. Um, I just had two questions. For the overhead doors, yep. um, are we... Is that just from one vendor that you got the quote, or is there is there going to be multiple quotes? That's a working number. It's an actual yeah. quote from one vendor, but we will go out to bid. Perfect. And then for the HVAC system, um, the air handler. Do you know the Do you know the model of it? If it's a train or a uh, the different type? On the ones we looked at, I believe those were Mitsubishi's, if I recall. Oh, that's for the split systems, right? Yeah. Not the, I'm, I was asking for the existing. In the basement. No, I'd have to look on try, try to find it on the plate. Actually, they're okay. they're quite old. I don't even know if it'll be marked on it. <laughs> no, because what I was what I was thinking was um, for those like the heat the heat pumps will get you, um, I, you know, estimated life twenty years, but and you're what is it four fifty? Um, would it make sense to maybe go a little bit to maybe spend a little bit more to replace the existing air handlers to to do the entire building? I think we could do that, but then you would run into the issue that we probably would not qualify for green community funding on it. My goal would be to try to get a quarter million from green communities over two years for this. So okay. my goal is to pound these down to almost nothing. There's obviously other thought <laughs> that was in there. So that was just, I'm just, I'm looking at it because um you know that number is kind of roughly a little bit more would probably get you a replacement air handler you know for the for the entire thing so and i'm kind of what we i'm actually, looking at is is kind of like we're kind of putting supplementary systems into uh you know an existing system to not cover everything and if that if the if there's additional funding that was given maybe it could Re replace the existing air handlers and have a, a greater scope, but um, there's obviously there's obviously a lot more that goes into that uh, coming up with this plan and your number versus kind of just me shooting off the top of my head. So yeah, because the air handlers right now we actually have five and they're very good size. They're big air handlers. I bet. Um, so that would be nice too. Is once we are able to implement this kind of system, we would be able to remove four of the five air handlers. I'd like to keep one still for fresh air intake, um, mm. but it give a lot of storage space in the basement. Thank you. Appreciate You're welcome. It. Tony, any questions for John? Um, John, I'll, I'll give you um, one, um, I guess, two questions. One is on the 175 for flag, um, are we sure that there's no, is there any opportunity for CPC for that scope? Or I know you, you mentioned exterior, you want to approach them for that in the future, but I guess I just want to triple check whether there any of the interior part is an option or not based on what you're looking to do and how their rules work. I would have to say no. Um, interior work, you, we want to modernize it for useful office space. Okay, it's not a preservation. Okay, that's that that's that's fair. Um, and are we com? And this is part B of that same question because I do have a second comment. Um, is on 
are we confident that there is actually a department lined up to move into that? So obviously, given all the moving pieces, we've got a school project coming, we've got other buildings that there's studies on, et cetera, and not expecting necessarily you to answer that tonight, but I would task Mark with that from a select board perspective, that if we are going to invest in any building, that there would be good use for it immediately and not like four years down the road sort of thing. I would think, Jason, I'm again, again, Mark would check with the select board, but I think no matter what, it's going to be used for a department or for meeting space or something else. And um, that's why I always like to give you worst case scenario. The 175, I believe I could do everything in worst case scenario inside and we could use whatever funds we have to and return the rest. Okay. I'd rather buffer and be safe. Okay. Um, I would, um, then I'm going to offer two comments for you to consider is one on the HVAC. I agree. You're not ready for prime time on that, right. but um, especially given your need and in desire to go for grant funding, which I applaud. We, we all know that grant funding, the cycles there don't fall in line with how town meeting works. And I'd ask you to think about if this is a project that we're going to see in the next year or two, right? And regardless of what amount you may come to the, the voters for, like, is there something we should be doing more from a, a debt perspective, right? So authorizing you to bond, right? And Brian would have to be on board with this too, right? But authorizing you to bond up to a certain amount so that if you did get a successful green communities grant or, you know, the federal government grant or, or something that you at least aren't sitting there saying, I have no way to fund whatever the town share is for this. Um, I now have to forego the grant again. You may get lucky and time it with a town meeting, but even with a second town meeting in a year, if we did a special, there's no guarantees that lines up. So, just have, did you consider that at all? I, I realize you're not ready to get the full funding, but just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, the hard part with the grants is we generally go to town meeting. At least we did up till this year because we were going in March. We had town meeting and then green community applications would do like the week after usually. Uh, so it definitely did make it difficult. Um, luckily, we've had strong projects that were able to line up. And I believe this is a very strong project. Uh, so once I have a more secure number that I'm confident bringing to you, I really do think we're going to get green communities funding for it. Uh, and again, the goal is always to maximize. I like to spread it out. Like if we do a hybrid vehicle with something like this, that's a beautiful application because the hybrid vehicle really cuts down on the CO2 emissions and this, they love it when you're coming off some of the natural fuels. So, I mean, if we go like that, yeah. Um, that's why I generally don't get too nervous going with this stuff to town meeting to ask, because I, I know if I can hit it right out of the ballpark with it, we're going to be good. You just got to be picky with the the projects you choose or green communities. Okay. So you'd prefer to get your grant first and then seek funding is what you're saying? Unfortunately, you guys end up being the funding first. It always does. It right. always ends up being funding is, first. I, I know you don't have a good number now, um, but is this a project? I mean, I don't, again, we will happily defer an article, but I think we also have a um, obligation if something is needed in, in that year, like that we provide you avenues, even if you're not perfectly ready yet or exploring other funding sources. So yeah, um, with this one, I have no reason to believe that the grants are going to go away on the split systems right away. The heat pumps, it looks like they're going to be doing this one for a while. Okay. Um, and realistically, I have other projects I can apply for next year. I like to put in a BMS or two around town, a couple more. Um, so again, if I can fully fund those through green, it, it's worth doing it. Okay. All right. So maybe it'll just disappear. That's what you're saying. <laughs> um, okay. Nothing disappears. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Uh, any other questions for John? All right. John, you may or you can choose to stay or not stay, but I know we have a vehicle discussion that impacts green communities coming up with the fire chief, but um, you're also welcome to leave and we can follow up with you as well. Actually, I have to go make a phone call, but I did discuss that with the chief already. So he'll fill you in what's going on. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, John. Have Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Let me get the chief over. Evening, Chief. Good evening. 
Um, I don't know why my video is not working. My apologies. can hear you loud and clear, so. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I can proceed if you'd like. I'm not sure why that's not working. Yeah, go ahead. We can hear you loud and clear. Let's um, jump right in. Um, so I think you kind of heard the format with, with John. I know this is your first time uh, working through this with us, and um, your predecessors obviously had a ton of capital in front of them over the past uh, few years that the, the town has supported. So I think um, key highlights that we'd like to hear from you tonight are obviously the committee has everything you submitted, uh, but just you know where your priorities are, any must haves um, in your capital plan and um, any other considerations, you know, we should be aware of that you don't think was kind of readily apparent based on our form submissions or um, kind of your, your, your standing Excel tracker. Okay. Um, so uh, thanks for having me tonight. Um, any questions, just stop me in my tracks by anybody. Um, so for this year for capital, um, I know, like I said, we've been pretty heavy duty over previous years. Um, this year um, for FY26, I had three requests, um, one for ultrasound for the ambulance, uh, personal protective gear for the firefighters, and also a potential command vehicle if the deputy fire chief's position was funded um, next year at town meeting. Um, I can go through each briefly, if you like. The ultrasound project is a fairly new um, protocol in Massachusetts where they're allowing ambulance providers to carry um, handheld ultrasound devices to help with um, diagnostic. So one of the primary features that it's looking for uh, that um, reasons for the program is for incidences of trauma. And, you know, with Route 9, 495, the Mass Pike, we do see quite a bit of trauma for a small community. And what we're looking for is internal bleeding in patients where we're able to give the hospital an advance notice and, uh, you know, they can have, you know, more resources available for us as we're rolling in the door. Um, that number is 25,000. Um, I did submit the quote for that, which showed right at 25,000. Uh, the, re and the reason I asked for 25 itself is we did have an opportunity the end of last budget to buy one probe. So, um, ideally each ambulance would have two probes, um, for different diagnostic views. I was able to purchase one, the end of last year. So, you know, I'd be, we'd be seeking funding for three additional and accessories to support them. Um, any questions on that? I, I have, Go ahead. Is, is this going to um, increase ambulance rates at all? How is this um, going to get budgeted? Uh, no, I mean, currently right now, it doesn't it it doesn't have a, um you know, billable spot on the ambulance rates. Uh, what what it would do is it might drive a call into uh, an ALS billing platform as opposed to a BLS billing platform, um, advanced life support versus basic life support. Um, you know, in re the the importance here is um, you know, quick access to care for patients. These are our most critical patients that we're seeing. Um, like I said, these are trauma victims on the highway and uh, so, maybe just around the house. So essentially, we're just looking at that. This is an increased cost of our ambulance. Yes. Uh, one, you know, one-time costs, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's operating costs throughout the year is pretty, is pretty minimal. Um, and, you know, the devices, you know, I would like to see last, you know, five, you know, probably about five-year life expectancy. And that, what is our ambulance ambulance lifespan or other equipment in the ambulance lifespan? Uh, it varies. So the ambulance itself, uh, usually anywhere between eight to 10 years um, and various equipment in it, um, you, know, uh, you know, five to 10. So I believe the cardiac monitors we just replaced are right at the 10 year mark. So it's pretty, oh. uh, it's pretty manufacturer specific. Uh, I'll give the, the stretcher for an example. <clears throat> um, the stretchers recommend a replacement at seven years. Um, <clears throat> so in my past experiences, we've gone a little bit over that depending on their condition. Um, so, you know, and this would be the same. If they're still operating fine, that's great. If, you know, we're starting to see where in that amount of time would be something we consider. All right. Tony? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> so does that price include training staff and how to use it? Um, so we're trying to do as much training as we can right now on duty. So I was able to send two, um, a lieutenant and a firefighter to a class la uh, in September um, for kind of like a train, train the trainer class. So ideally, we're going to do as much of the training in-house on duty. 
with uh, you know with our available our available staff. Also, our medical control director is very on board with this, and they're pretty uh, you know out of UMass and Worcester, they're pretty um, they're pretty familiar with this type of technology, and uh, they come out quarterly and do EMS classes refreshers with us. And uh, where they even just heard we were considering this, their last time they came out, they actually brought a bunch of their equipment and did a pretty thorough class for us. Thank you. Um, let me go back for a second. Did you say this that there was going to be a new state requirement, or is this no? Just... Uh, uh, it's an optional. Uh, it's an optional service uh, that the state is allowing us to do. The state's allowing us to do, but it's okay. All it's right. not. No, it's not. It's not required. It's optional equipment in the ambulance. Dave. Oh, thank you. Um, is it is it twenty five per, or is it twenty five total for? The three uh, requesting twenty five total. Each probe is around uh, six thousand dollars, six thousand and change, uh, plus associated accessories with it. Okay, so I I didn't see the quote. I just it was you said twenty five, and then you said just one, and then there was three. So oh no, uh, sorry, I apologize for that. No, that's my fault. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think Chief, you're okay to go to the next one. Sure. So um, the next one I enlisted was uh, PPE, uh, uh, personal protective equipment. Um, you know, th that's been a revolving capital item from what I see in the capital list um, from year to year. In previous years, it's been $20,000. We're usually able to buy uh, about four sets of gear with that. Um, I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys have seen in the news a lot of attention around PFAS in, uh, in everything, our drinking water and our firefighting gear. Um, the state actually started a new requirement where any gear sold um, after, uh, I, I don't know if it's January 1st or sometime in February in 2027 has to be certified PFAS free. Anything sold after this year has to be labeled whether it has PFAS or not in it. So, you know, we're going to start, this is a wave of the future for the entire country. Massachusetts is on the forward part of that wave, which um, it's got its pros and cons. It's great for the health and welfare of us as responders and the crews, um, but it also has a cost of um, the unknown. So we're going to potentially be have a few years where we're going to see Massachusetts compliant structural turnout gear. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be an added expense to that. And nobody can really answer those questions yet. Um, another item with that is uh, we're starting to come up on replacement cycles for a lot of other PPE, not just coats and pants, um, helmets, gloves, uh, firefighting boots. Um, I did apply for a grant through the state uh, just two weeks ago uh, to try to replace all of our boots, which are about $700 a pair. Um, you know, so hopefully that'll take some of the burden off. But, um, you know, we're kind of looking at not just structural coats and pants, but uh, kind of the whole ensemble, um, you know, we're going to start seeing some replacement cycles coming up. Questions on this item? All right, Chief, uh, go ahead. Yeah, never mind, Joe, oh, yes yeah. or no? Yeah, yeah, no, I had one. Um, and, and alternate gear, is this also including uh, fire nozzles and other, th other things that uh, were in the package? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? In, in, when you said alternate gear, uh, was that including also um, the nozzles and other sorts of things that were in the package? No, no. So I would, uh, so other gear would be, um, you know, boots, gloves. Um, we wear uh, hoods around our necks to protect us from heat, um, helmets, um, I, uh, items like that. Okay. So the, the, other, the other gear, the, the other things in the package were a different item. Yeah, that's next year, Joe. Um, looking at the chief's plan. So he gave his two, he followed the instructions and gave kind of next year stuff, but so that's a separate line item from what I can tell. Yes. All right. Last item for FY26, chief. Okay. Um, last item would be uh, the com uh, new command vehicle um, should a deputy fire chief be funded in next year's budget. Um, uh, I've done, I've done some research. So I've, I've been working with John Parent and trying to figure out um, how to make sure we meet the green community standards for a command vehicle. Um, we do have a few, we do have a few irons in the fire. Um, we don't have a hard answer um, yet one way or another, but we feel like we're pretty close. We would be able to meet that specification. Um, from what I've researched, a 
vehicle MSRP is going to be probably, you know, around 60,000. And then the fit out, uh, the, the radio alone cost 10, the, uh, communications radio alone cost 10,000 and then plus, uh, labor to install it. And, uh, same with the up, upfitter package for, uh, lights and any command console on the back. So that's why, um, I submitted that number of 90,000 and I believe, um, I submitted just a, uh, a window sticker of a comparable vehicle to what we have now, um, for around 60 to 70. So can you clarify, assuming the deputies approved in the operating budget and you purchased this vehicle, what advice has John given you on eligible type of vehicles that you'd be able to consider? And how does that compare to the, the window sticker based on what you have now? Um, so the, I believe the window sticker I submitted was pretty much for a clone of what we have now, the Tahoe. That would probably not meet the requirements unless we, um, so he's researching if there's some options of an eco diesel that could possibly meet the EPA requirements. And there's also some other uh, small um, turbo four cylinders that really doesn't get us into the um, plug-in hybrid or uh, hybrid option where, you know, these vehicles can be idling for a long period of time at an emergency scene. Um, you know, we just want to make sure that they're going to be stable for that type of use. Other questions, Joe? Uh, I had a question not related to that. Um, it was on the on the spreadsheet. The the power stretchers we ended up going about eighty thousand for the new ambulance. Is that what we approved in twenty twenty five? Because it says fifty five thousand in twenty twenty four, and it says eighty thousand in twenty twenty five. Is that what we approved before? Um, I don't think we actually approved anything for a power stretcher. I'd have to go back and check but I don't think anything actually got approved, um, but I have to go back and check. From what I understand that that's just going to be in the overall cost of the new ambulance that we have coming in, um, which is about, uh, about, you know, we're not expected to see that until 2026. Yeah. Cause I, 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 I remember it being the purchase, the whole purchase being stalled out um, because we, because of availability. Um, so I was just wondering it, it, you know, given that we have two different numbers in the spreadsheet there, just looking for a clarification. Yeah, no so the, I, what I can confirm now is that the 551 was approved. And if you remember, um, when the interim fire chief was here making the, the presentation when he took over for Chief Achilles, I think we all agreed to kind of table the, the power stretcher because I think there was becoming an expectation that the 551 was going to be enough for both the power stretcher and the ambulance all in one. So... Um, this is the fire department spreadsheet. We need to still do our um, administrative work on our site, Joe, to kind of mirror it up. Um, but that's a very good comment and observation. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I was just wondering if there was any update on that. All right. No problem. Um, so, Chief, just for the abundance of clarity, you obviously are anchoring this vehicle around a position that is not currently funded or appointed. Have you and Mark talked about logistically how this would work? So let's just say capital supportive of the vehicle, assuming the position gets funded. Given that the operating budget goes first, and just correct me if I'm wrong here, if the deputy were not to pass, your budget were not to pass, would you ask us to pull on the floor of this vehicle? Or would you ask us to continue to pursue it for other departmental reasons or is it solely a deputy chief vehicle um and you'd if, have to have that position to actually kind of bring this forward well, yeah i mean if this came if you guys were to recommend this to go to the floor i would ask that it gets pushed either way just for the fact of the following year um our fire prevention vehicles up for replacement so um you know even if the deputy chief isn't funded you know, the the vehicle is still going to be needed in the following fiscal year um, to replace an agent, uh, an agent uh, fire prevention vehicle. Okay. And if I'm not saying this would ever happen, but if the deputy never got funded, then theoretically, if we approve this one this year, then you would pull the fire prevention vehicle in the following year just to... Oh. 
worst case scenario for you, obviously. Yep. But, yeah, worst worst case wanna... scenario. Yep, worst case scenario, the deputy does not get approved. Um, the command car still goes through. I would pull the fire prevention vehicle replacement for um, FY27. Okay. Okay. That's helpful to know. Um, any other questions for the chief on those? Um, so chief, um, just kind of looking ahead, um, we've got a ways to go, um, until we have anything of any sort of material substance here, well over a hundred thousand, you know, well into the future, right? Um, uh, looking at yeah. some small items each year, but yeah, but this is mainly chief Achilles spreadsheet. You know, I went through it a little bit. Um, I know some of the items I think I removed was like the, uh, EM1, the communications trailer. Um, oh, that I'm sorry, that is still in there. You know, that's for FY28. You know, we could probably talk about that next year and maybe even consider pushing some items like that. Uh, but no, 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 no large um, items that are uh, at least right now recognized. Okay. Well, I'll tell you this, this is going to make the record for the shortest discussion with a fire chief, at least during our capital tenure, uh, for a uh, number of items, but um, it's probably a good time period to, to have get, gotten all caught up. And I'm glad to see that the community has supported um, all the vehicles that are now still in production, I feel like at this point. Great. Uh, Joe, uh, you're not off the hook yet, Chief. Joe's got another question or comment. Oh, well, since we have time, can we get an update on the new ladder truck? Yes, absolutely. Um, so the new ladder is uh, nearing completion. The final inspection trip is planned for November 13th to the 15th. Um, and we'll probably see the truck up here at the local dealer um, sometime around Thanksgiving, I would imagine, assuming that the final inspection trip goes okay and they don't find any egregious errors, um, which, you know, typically they uh, those trips do not. Um, and the dealer will have it for probably about three or four weeks, uh, lettering it, mounting equipment, um, doing their, uh, preventative maintenance cycles after its long trip up from Florida. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see the truck in service shortly after the first of the year, if not a little sooner. Did, did that come in on, on budget with the, uh, with the allotment for new equipment that we put in? It did. It did. It came in, uh, so the trade for the old truck ended up being, um, much, higher than we possibly could have anticipated. So that really uh, worked in our favor for uh, equipment. Um, I don't I don't want to quote a final number right now, what we're looking at okay. for equipment, but I can definitely get that back to you. But um, we're in very good shape. Yep. No, I wouldn't expect it to know off the top of your head. <laughs> sure, that goes both ways. No, that's good to hear. Um, glad it'll be here. Thank you. And while Joe's on that topic, you might as well give a update on the long-awaited tender as well. Yep. Uh, uh, so uh, that was one of my first missions after I started. I think the second week I had uh, the um, regional um, sales representative uh, in, in the station in our conference room. And he, he was nervous, uh, rightfully so. So the tender was ordered. Uh, Chief Achilles signed the order in November of 2021. The manufacturer didn't order the chassis until August of 2022. Uh, the chassis uh, through International has just completed construction um, now. So the major holdup has been International Motors trying to get us a cabin chassis. Um, assuming they get the uh, manufacturer gets that by the end of this calendar year, they're looking late winter, early spring for delivery. And I did try to uh, ask them. So there's uh, a, a different manufacturer is was um, going around, uh, there was, you might have seen some articles, I believe it was Londonderry, New Hampshire, where they actually tried increasing the price of the original contract. Um, and it didn't go over so well, as you can imagine, for uh, the vendor. And uh, I, I did uh, talk to our vendor about that. And, uh, you know, they wouldn't, he wouldn't put on paper that they're definitely 150% going to honor the contract price. But he said, with all this pandemic, um, inflation going on that they have not once yet um, not honored a contract price. So I felt pretty comfortable with that. Thank you. And Jason, thanks for that one. Yeah. Good discussion.
All right, Chief, we will let you know if we have any additional questions. Um, the way that typically works is we hear from the department heads first, and then we roll it up, see where we're at, compare it, and have some discussions with um, overall town administration in terms of where the operating budget's going, and then um, go from there. Great. I appreciate you guys' time tonight. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Have a good night. You too. All right. Um, next item is a FY26 capital overall update. So um, as you remember, our deadline was early September to get the submissions in. Uh, we still need to hear from the police chief, the recreation director, um, in terms of they've submitted everything. They were timely in their submissions. And um, we just need to invite them into a future meeting. So we'll talk about meeting schedule in a second. Um, I've only received a very preliminary indication from DPW. Um, so I have Mark and Brian, I'm gonna to continue to need your help there because um, as we know, they have a lot going on. And you know we've heard from them many times recently about some of the things they have going on. So I wanna make sure we give them all the chance um, we can to submit a comprehensive plan, but right now I think we've only seen a few vehicles come through. So um, I'll likely have Bill come in last. Um, so then in terms of how it's shaking up, and I'm, I'm being cautious of what I'm gonna say here because I don't know what DPW has, is um, it's an incredibly light capital year, right? We just heard from two department heads that usually have a lot. Um, they don't have a ton. Um, we all know there's a school, um, which is a major price tag there will be a discussion. That's certainly a capital item. So, um, but it's not going to be competing against other items. I will say the schools do have other items that they're going to also have to come present. Mainly a roof at Trottier, that are you know that will be larger. The only other large project, again, both of these are bonded. Um, if if approved, would be recreation is advancing their plans um, for Choate Field, which is the field in front of the Woodward School. Um, I think it's been on their capital plan each of the last four years, but they've they've pushed it off. But um, obviously, do not want to be bringing it forward at the same time the school is under construction uh, because of the loss of playing fields, et cetera. So they want to create some phasing. So um, I don't know if they approach CPA about that, but Travis and the RecCom will come in and articulate what the project is. Um, but that is not a small price tag um, given the, the the scope of the project. So. To summarize, we have a lot of small requests from normal departments that have large requests. And then we have two large items that I'm aware of to date, one being the Choate Field project and two being the Trottier Roof project. We will work with Mark and Brian to kind of figure out how best to summarize this and then how it also lays into the, the overall um, town operating plan. Questions? All right, um, there's no public here, so I'm going to skip public comment. In terms of other business, I know we tentatively have a meeting scheduled for next week. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to get um, a full quorum for that. So I'm going to have to um, poll to get a non-Monday um, over the next month that we can try to get recreation and police in here. And then we'll use that later November meeting that we already have on the books for uh, DPW. Bigger picture is the select board are looking and advisory are looking for our preliminary recommendations and presentations before the holidays. So I think that does give us time to then deliberate and decide if there's anything that we want to pull back on or um, if we want to present anything with caution or we want to present with you know full speed ahead. But we need the total picture. So um, Mark, I guess, is our other business and in conjunction with some of the earlier statements, I think could really use a push from, from your department heads to help us finalize our work. Yep, absolutely. I did have a conversation with um, with Bill Cundiff today. He had some regulatory um, filings that he had to get in last week. He's just about um, finished up what he needs to submit to you. So um, hopefully you're going to see that this week. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other business from other committee members? 
All right, I'll move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Joe? Aye. Tony? Aye. Steve? Aye. And I am I as well. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.